Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Great Day Houston. Are you dreading another school year because your child, although very smart, just seems to struggle in the classroom, which means you struggle along with them? At the Reynard School for Gifted Students, they learn the required lessons, but they're taught in a more unique and stimulating way. Discussions, projects, and field trips are part of the curriculum. I went to class with a head of school at Reynard, Dr. Tara Tomachik, who shared the ways they can take a child's learning experience from flat to flourishing, and a parent's input is valued. Dr. Thomas, when we say it's a great school for gifted and talented children, there's a parent out there who heard, oh, wait, but my child was diagnosed ADHD or dyslexic, so that would not involve my child, when in fact, oftentimes, those are the kids who are gifted and talented. Yes, it's true. Actually, dyslexia runs higher in the gifted population than the regular population. Um, and there are quite a, a large percentage of gifted children who are what we call twice exceptional, meaning they're gifted and they have another exceptionality, which could be anything from dyslexia to ADHD to processing disorders. All of these things are able to be remediated and often their giftedness is in fact covered and um, hidden because their learning disability takes the forefront. Oftentimes, the difference between being successful in life and not is uh, figuring that out early. You look at people like Tom Cruise, Justin Timberlake, Steven Spielberg, all of them say they knew something was wrong and they struggled in spaces, but what made the big difference were the places where they learned to do the workaround, if you will. Yes. And that's what Reynard School is about. So for a parent who's trying to figure out what's happening with their child right now, what are some signs to look for uh, that might guide them to come here? Definitely if they are unhappy in school, you always want to know what's, what's the unhappiness from. Uh, and it could be that they're not gifted, it could be that they're um, experiencing something else, but it's certainly a red flag to start looking. Early readers, not all gifted children read early. Again, if they have dyslexia, they're not going to read early. They're going to be late learners with that. If they are innately curious, they're curious about everything. You mean the kid um, that like drives the teacher nuts in class? Yes. Goes, but why yes. come? But, yes. why come? but why come? But why come? They're, they're yeah. searching for answers to everything. Yeah. Um, when and they, that can be something that can be kind of disruptive yes. in some classroom settings. Yes. But in a classroom setting here at Reynard, it is welcomed. It's welcomed and it's explored because the way our curriculum is designed, we can stop, we can go down rabbit holes, we can talk about things further in depth because the children are learning at a faster pace and they're being challenged. Everybody has their favorite subjects, even gifted kids, but generally speaking, um, they're going to be asking a lot of questions. When they're younger, they're going to be noticeably different from their same age peers. They might not play a board game the way it's supposed to be played. This also drives teachers and parents nuts. <laughs> they'll take parts from one and they'll make up another game with another board or they'll do something different with it. They're not neurotypical, they don't follow, they don't follow the norm. One of the other things that, that kind of sets you apart is your atmosphere. Even where your whole campus is located gives you some other experiences that kids can take advantage of. Yes, we have a lot of outdoor time. We have a great green covered space, lots of shade, lots of incredible outdoor uh, play equipment. It's based on research. Children learn better if they have outdoor time, not 10 minutes, not 15 minutes, but good outdoor time they focus better when they get back to class. You are satisfying all the requirements of the state of Texas in terms of education, but it's in the way that you do it. For example, if you're doing math, is it just in a book and writing problems down on a page, or could it also be through cooking? So we do a lot of hands-on project-based learning that makes what they're learning in terms of math curriculum, science curriculum more relevant. Another part of our program is field trips. It's a very important part of our curriculum and we do take field trips once a month. The kids, when they're studying a certain subject, get to go see something that's relevant to that. Our art program is very robust. They don't get 30 minutes of art, they get two hours of art every week music. So we're very well rounded and they get to experience all of those different ways of learning, all of those different subject matter and content as well as put them together. For you, what came first, the chicken or the egg? Your decision to go into education <laughs> with psychology or a child who had learning differences? A child who was, yes, not neurotypical, uh, wasn't fitting into the regular school system. Uh, I grew up uh, in a different country that had diff a very different system that was a little more progressive, so I was uh, quite disenchanted with the experience that she, my daughter had in kindergarten. She tested gifted and we started looking for answers because after kindergarten she didn't like school and I thought that was terrible. Um, so I wound up finding Reynard. 
share some of the differences that um, students have shared with you or parents in terms of where the kids were before and after coming through Raynard's doors. I'm thinking of a student in particular that, that came to our school, was very withdrawn, um, not very social. Within a year, uh, I had parents who knew this child before who did not even recognize this child anymore. Social, loving coming to school, a big friend group, um, interested, you know, all of the interests kind of expanded. It wasn't just one area. They really find their like-minded peers here. So the social aspect, coupled with the teachers understanding them. Gifted kids know when somebody's not getting them or doesn't like them or thinks that they're, you know, not doing what they're supposed to. That understanding goes a long way. So they have this nurturing environment where they're also challenged academically and they just blossom. Yeah, all right. So for a parent out there who's trying to figure out, can we just keep our kid right in the school um, that we're at, that we're zoned to, versus looking at Raynard, what would you say to them to just at least see what you offer here? Yeah, I would absolutely invite them to come for a tour of our campus. It's beautiful. We can explain further all the different aspects of our program that make us very special and unique by design. I would encourage them to look into any sort of learning difference their child might have, get some testing done. We have a mix, so we do have gifted students with learning differences. We have plenty of gifted students who don't have learning differences. They all benefit from the same type of classroom setting, which is hands-on, project-based, nurturing and challenging. Ready for the real world? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And for more information about Raynard School for Gifted Students and to schedule a campus tour, log on to Raynard.org. Raynard is spelled R-A-I-N-A-R-D.